One, two, one, two, three. Might as well get this done right now. Uh, essentially, I did at least promise to give a tutorial at one stage. Um, I also promised to create a Tommy in it plush doll, which I actually have done, but I'm going to leave that for a bit because uh, it looks like it has the head of a bean. <laughs> it is one ugly motherfucker. And nonetheless, I feel like a tutorial is something that you guys would more likely want in the long run. So I also apologize for any cars that come by. My room is right next to the road and I, I can't record anywhere else. Along with the fact that the washing machine is currently going and the washing must be done. I cannot stop this. The clothes need to be cleaned. Nonetheless, I'm just going to get right into it. Okay, step one. Find some good old bops. Anything that has a clear beat or some nice lyrics that go well with the whatever thing you're animating to. Basically just vibe check it. I, I can't explain anything more since this is my process but essentially everything needs to pass the vibe check first. Another note is that if you're having to use audio that involves some kind of conversation like when the YouTubers are doing the raw bits they kind of pause for really long times or the space gets filled in with a lot of mob noises or whatever so a good tip to circumvent that is to you know just get some ambient noise anything like forest or beach noises really cover up those little things next step two is to time things out we're not doing any of the sketching yet. It's still too early for that. At least I don't like to do sketching right away because I found out earlier on that if I just go straight into the sketching, I'll either underestimate how much I actually need to draw or overestimate. So timing things out by putting the audio into like an editing software and then using subtitles or boxes to segment different parts of the song are really helpful because then you can just, you know, just figure how many scenes you'll have and how long the whole process will take. Also giving you a more concrete idea of what it is you actually want to do. Step three, the actual sketching. That's right, now we actually have to open up the art program. Usually you just want to do the main keyframes and compositions of things. You don't want to overwhelm yourself right at the bat and you essentially just want to figure out where the placement of things go within the actual framing. Usually just this just involves me sketching things out in a very, well, awful way. Step four, line art and colouring. This is where I get possessed by demons and I commit blasphemy. For one thing is that I have almost three processes of animating things. Either I A, do things frame by frame, in which I kind of do the stupid thing. I don't sketch out what each frame should look like. And instead, I just sketch out the starting frame, draw the line up for that, and then just continue on with each individual frame straight from the line art instead of sketching. You know, like an idiot. Sometimes I even forget to do the um, keyframe for the last frame, so I don't even know how it's supposed to end up. The second part is by creating one large image, and usually it's for the more detailed things, and then going in and separating them each individually and editing it so that I can then put it in the software that I'm using for editing and move them manually little by little. This is helpful for if I want to do some simple movements but with a really detailed picture but at the same time it also involves me having like 50 different files on the one single image. The third method in which I do is I create a base frame and then I copy and paste that frame every single time, only altering the parts that I want to move. This way it's just, you know, less effort instead of redrawing the frame over and over again. Usually I end up with quite a lot of layers, but not as many as I would expect people would usually have, as I tend to do everything on the one layer. Because another thing is that um, my computer will crash if I have too many layers. So that is hell. Step five, saving every single layer and then moving it into the editing software. I swear to God, this sometimes takes longer than anything else. 
mainly because I have no kind of shortcut to just save every frame individually. I have to go in, put the frames in correctly, and manually control shift S to save as, label it, then repeat the process again for every single object I need. Which more often than not is well over 50 objects and I just don't even want to. <laughs> Step six, editing. Usually the more calmer process of things. Usually it's just a lot of tedious work of moving things around, trying my best not for the goddamn cheap ass free software that I'm using to accidentally crash and me to start crying because there is no auto save feature. Usually with editing it's mainly just putting the images into the file at the right points and then manually editing it to give the illusion of some kind of transition or tweening. The software that I use is not exactly one that I would suggest to someone else as there is like a limit to how many things you can do with each object or just a limit overall and it isn't like any set limit where it's just oh you're using the free software so you can only use this amount of effects no it's a limit because it gets to a point where after you do so many things it just crashes because it cannot handle it which results in me at times creating multiple files for the one video. I am not having a fun time with that part. Step seven is the effect stage. Basically, this is just me making things look a little better in the long run. Adding overlays, rechanging the lighting, adding texture effects, adding better looking subtitles, just really basic stuff that in the grand scheme of things doesn't really matter, but at the end of the day, it just makes the end product just look a little better and a little more polished. And then finally, step eight, the most scariest part in which I wait and hope for the best, as the software I'm using will crash if I play back to see what the actual product is, which means I don't know what it looks like. I'm, I'm, I'm making these blind, okay? And then I render it and hope for the best that it is not absolute crap. So if you find there are a lot of mistakes in my videos, blame mainly that for the reason, because there are a lot of mistakes in my videos. I am not going to deny that. There's just so many little things that are just incorrect or I just messed up in some way. Like one thing's the wrong color or something's just a little bit out of frame or something nudges a little too far to the right or it bumps. That's just how it is. And usually by the end of this process and I'm waiting and I look at the final product to see that it hasn't like, I don't know, the file has corrupted or something because it's just too cursed. If it turns out I made like a minute mistake, I'm just so far into the process at the end that I'm just like, well, better luck next time, I guess. I guess we'll just see how this goes tomorrow. <laughs> if there are any more like questions that I didn't answer, they'll probably be answered later on in a different video in which I brutally murder the Tommy in it clash because that thing listen it's just ugly I'm looking at it right now it looks like it's possessed and it looks ugly and it looks like it's swallowed a bean and it's been stung by bees and I really just want to punch it I'm looking forward to be able to video it and drown it that's me signing off Good luck for the future, you're gonna need it. You know what, there is too many cars, I'm closing my window. Closing my window won't help in the long run, but at least it'll do something.